Hey everyone, and welcome back to the latest tutorial from Just the Basics. Today, we're going to be creating a sci fi corridor in Blender version 2.93.1. Let's jump straight in. Before we start our tutorial, let's go through the assets we're going to be using. Make sure you've downloaded the latest version of Blender, which is Blender version 2.93.1. I'm going to be using assets from 3dassets.1 as these are completely free and super easy to download. So to get all the assets I'm using, I just searched sci-fi and then pulled some from here. But we'll jump back to this as we need them. And also, we're going to be using Polyhaven. So this formerly was known as HDRI Haven or Texture or Model Haven. But they've all been merged into the one website for ease of use. So all of these are completely free to use and super useful in our project. So with that out of the way, let's jump straight into Blender. Opening up Blender, let's just go to our render properties over here. Make sure we're running the EV render engine. And then we can start by deleting our default light. So we still have a bit of a sad face there. Let's go ahead and select our default cube. And we're going to tab into edit mode and then just hit G for grab, then Z and one to grab it up one on the Z axis. Now that we've done that, we can tab out of edit mode and scale this up. So let's go ahead and scale it up something quite larger. So I'm going to scale it up five times larger than what it is. So I'm going to hit S, 5, and Enter. After having done this, I want it to be a fair bit longer as I want it to feel like a corridor. So I'm going to scale it five times longer on the Y axis by hitting S, Y, 5, and Enter. Now we have the basic shape of our corridor. Let's go ahead and affect some more aspects of this geometry just a little bit by hitting tab to go into edit mode and switching from vertices select up here in the top left hand corner to face select. I'm going to go ahead and select this back face and just hit X and then delete faces. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this front face and I'm going to hit P. Now P brings up our separate options and we want to separate this by selection. So now that we've done that, if we tab out of edit mode, this front face is a different object to the rest of our corridor, which is going to be very useful for creating our doors inside. Let's jump back over to 3dassets.1 and grab some materials. So in 3dassets.1, I've already downloaded some textures that I want to use, and you can use any that you think would look good in your scene. But the ones I'm using is this sci-fi door number one, metal plate number 46, and sci-fi wall number six. So I'm going to use this for both my walls, my floor, and the door at the end of the corridor that you saw in the intro video. So go ahead and download the materials you would like. Make sure to save them in a location that you can easily access. And once you've done that, let's jump back into Blender. I'm going to go to the top left-hand corner until I see a crosshair, and then left-click and drag to the right. What I can do then is go until I see the crosshair in that top left-hand corner again, and this time left-click and drag down vertically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change these viewport types from being a just general to a shader editor in the top and then hit N just to remove that side toolbar. There's a nice little tip inside of Blender. If you need to remove a right hand side toolbar, just hit N to remove that. And in this bottom editor type, I'm going to change this to UV editor. The next thing we're going to need is to make use of one of these add-ons inside of Blender and that's the node Wrangler add-on. So just go to edit preferences and then to add-ons. And just search for the node Wrangler add-on and put a tick next to that if there's not already one there as it's super useful to have. Now we can go about importing our materials. To do that, we already have a material applied here, but there's nothing at all affected on this principal BSDF shader. We want to add some images in to apply as a texture. So let's left click that and with it selected, we're going to hit Control, Shift and T for texture. Now this will open up our file explorer and we can navigate to where we saved our images. So once you've found the folder, I like to save them under pictures usually, then a folder called textures. I'm going to grab my wall texture first. We'll hit A to select all of these. And then we can just press this blue button here for principal texture setup. Having done that, we now have our texture correctly applied. Well, almost correctly. It's currently missing the base color. This is probably a little bit of an error. But if you do have a similar problem yourself, just go ahead and duplicate one of these nodes and then go to this little folder icon and click that and select the base color image from there and just drag it color to base color. And now if we enable material preview by selecting viewport shading up here or just Z and material preview, we can see how our texture is applying. And currently it's quite stretched. So let's fix that. We'll hit tab to go into edit mode and hit A to select all. Then we're gonna hit U to bring up our UV mapping options and select Q projection. With that now projected a bit more correctly, we're gonna to need to stretch it out a little bit. 
So let's scroll out of our UV editor and hit A to select all here and then S and X to scale it up sideways or horizontally on the X axis and then five because we made our corridor five times longer than it is high. So now we've done that, let's hit enter and we can see that our walls are looking fantastic. Our floor and ceiling on the other hand aren't looking so great. So to adjust this, I'm just gonna scale down this texture for the roof. I'm gonna hit S, X and set this to 0.2 to scale it back to the original square shaped size. Now what I wanna do is I wanna scale it up five times longer on the vertical or Y axis. So let's hit S, Y, then five and enter. And now we have our roof looking pretty nice. The next step we have to do, of course, is adjust our floor. So to do that, we're gonna add a whole new texture. So let's select our floor, go to our material properties over here on the right hand side of our screen. And we're gonna hit this little plus icon to add in a new material. We'll go ahead and select new. And then once again, with our principal BSDF shader selected, we can hit control, shift and T to bring up our textures. So let's go ahead and navigate to our floor folder, hit A to select all and import them. I'm just going to duplicate this and add in my base color again as it's forgotten it once more and just plug that in. And you might be wondering why nothing here has changed with our floor. It's still using the current material that is on the walls. Well, that's because we need to make sure we have our floor material selected and then our area that we want to apply to and select a sign. Now that we've done that, we're previewing our grid here except it is stretched. So we need to correct this a little bit as well. Okay, so what we need to do then is we need to scale this down back to being the original shape of our square. So let's hit S, X, 0.2 and then enter to do that. And then we're going to need to rotate this to 90 degrees by hitting R, 9, 0 and enter. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and just scale this up on the X axis by hitting S, X and then five and then enter. And that's looking pretty good. Although these tiles are a little big for what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scale this up three times larger overall by hitting S for scale three to scale up three times larger and then enter. All that's left to do is start affecting this geometry a little bit more. Before I go ahead and do that though, I'm gonna just rename my materials for future use. So I'm gonna call this bottom one here floor and this top one walls. So now I'm gonna be able to tell the difference between these two. Now let's go ahead and affect our geometry a little bit more by editing it. So I've hit one on my number pad to switch to an orthographic view, which is just essentially front on with no perspective. And I'm gonna hit four or six to rotate around until I'm looking at my screen side on. With that being done, what I can do is I can drop in some loop cuts. Now loop cuts allow me to add in extra edges where there weren't any formally and this is super useful for editing our geometry and being able to affect it or make it more realistic. So let's go ahead and hit control R and I'm going to just go ahead and drop this in at the edge of each of these doors here. So I'm going to hit control R again to add in another one. So once I hit control R, I just left click once and then I'm able to slide that around. If you accidentally place a loop cut somewhere you don't want and can't move it, just hit control Z to undo that and then go back, hit control R, left click once, and you should be able to slide it along perfectly until you can line it up with the location you would like. Have a bit of fun with this, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it is a really cool way to add an extra layer of believability. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just select face select, and then I'm going to select all the faces of these doors on one side and hit E to extrude it, one, and then I'm gonna hit the minus or subtract option to invert that and then enter. Now let's go ahead and do the same for the other side. Holding down left click and shift to select multiple items. I can hit E to extrude and then one and then just subtract that again by hitting the minus or the hyphen and enter. And now that's looking pretty good. The only problem is I'm going to need to apply a texture to the side of these new faces we've created. So once again, holding shift and left click down, I'm just gonna select all of those faces. The reason for that is then I can edit them all at once and that's gonna be pretty time saving. Okay, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and unwrap them by once again, bring up our unwrapping options and hitting Q projection. And then we can see that it's projecting them. They're a little bit off centered for what I want. I want this grill to be a bit more centered. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this in my UV editor, then hit G and X to move it along. 
and center that nicely. I'll do the same for the other side by just left clicking and dragging and G, X and moving that along to center it. And then finally, we can hit tab to leave edit mode. And that's looking pretty good. All we need to do now on this corridor itself is maybe a few final adjustments. So I might add some light strips down where these cables are. To do that, we're going to be in edit mode and add a few more loop cuts by hitting control R and just dropping one in either side of this cabling. So let's go ahead and do that. Control R, drop a few loop cuts in. And then inside of that, I'm gonna add a couple more as well. Just either side of those cables. So now if I go to face select, because loop cut automatically moves us over to edge select because we're working with edges and just angle my view a little bit, I can hold alt and select all of the faces in that row. Now, sometimes it will select the wrong way. It'll go from side to side as opposed to going down. But what you need to do is just angle your view down or hit control Z. Okay, now that I've selected those, what I'm going to do is add one more new material by hitting this plus icon here and selecting new material. And this one's just gonna be an emission shader. So I'm gonna set the emission brightness all the way up to white and the strength up to something like 10 and then just select assign and we're gonna call this lights. So now that we've done that, we have our lights, we have our corridor modeled. Let's go ahead and finally add in our dual material. So we're just gonna select this last in face here. I'm gonna hit tab to enter edit mode a to select all, U to select uh, or bring up our UV mapping properties and then select Q projection again. So as is, it already looks pretty good, but I do have a door material that I'd like to apply here. So I'm going to go ahead and once again, add in a new material, select new and grab our principal BSDF shader, hit control shift T and bring in my door texture. So I'll hit A to select all and then select principal texture setup and once that's all set up correctly, then we can just go ahead and edit this geometry a little bit. And once that's all set up, let's just go tab back into edit mode and make sure to assign that our door material. And then let's go ahead and edit this a little bit as well. I'm gonna add a loop cut just down the center where the door is gonna split by hitting control R and just placing it directly in the center. Then what I'll do is I'll select one half of the face and select P and separate by selection. Now that I've done that, we can rotate our doors to open and shut but you'll see that currently they're rotating according to their world origin point, which is in the center of our corridor. Let's go ahead and select cursor select and just drop in our cursor where we think the hinge would realistically be. What we can do then is right click and select set origin to 3D cursor. Now the origin point of this door will be wherever that cursor was placed. So we can go ahead and do the same for the other door and select that and go set origin to 3D cursor again. Now we'll easily be able to animate these doors opening and moving around. The next thing we need to do before we do that though, is add in some camera movement because we want our camera to feel nice and realistic as it goes through the scene. Currently, it's just looking at the wall here. So we're going to need to hit N to bring up our right hand side menu and go select view and just select lock camera to view. Now when we scroll around, we won't leave the camera view, but rather the camera will follow us around. So what I like to do for this is just start the camera at the beginning of the hallway at frame one. And then just by selecting the camera, I go ahead and hit I and insert a keyframe for location and rotation. Then we can jump to frame 120 and just hit G and Y and grab and pull our camera through the scene. Now I'm gonna hit I and insert another location and rotation keyframe and set my in frame of this scene to 120. If we play through now, we can see that we speed through the scene quite rapidly. That's not what we want. We want more of a realistic sort of walking effect. And we don't want to start slow, then speed up and then slow back down again. So to fix that, we're gonna change the editor type of our UV editor to our graph editor. Here in our graph editor, we can actually control the speed with which our camera goes through the scene. Namely, we want it to have a linear speed throughout the whole scene. So let's hit A on our graph panel to select all of the current keyframes we have. Then we can select channel and we're gonna set our extrapolation mode from constant extrapolation, which it is at currently to linear extrapolation. What this will mean then is our camera will now travel throughout this scene at a constant speed. 
that looks a lot more like what I wanted to achieve. But we need a bit of a walking effect. To achieve this very simply, let's hit N to bring up our right hand side toolbar in our graph editor and go to modifiers. Now I'm going to select the X axis, which is this red line here. And I'm going to select add modifier, add noise modifier. Now here, I'm going to change just a few of these parameters. So the scale, I'm going to turn that up to something like 20. And then the strength, I'm going to set to 0.4. Now, if we play that back, you'll notice we have a bit of a wobble from side to side, but it still doesn't quite feel like walking yet. So let's go ahead and select the Z axis. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a noise modifier here as well, but select the scale and set that to 10. And then let's turn that strength up maybe to something like 0.5. And now we have something much more realistic. We can even turn it up a little bit more. And there we have it, a nice walking effect through our scene. All we have to do now is animate our doors opening. So let's go ahead and select the first one. And I reckon probably at around frame 80. Once we get close to these doors, they should start opening. So I'm going to hit I to insert a location rotation keyframe and then jump to frame 120 and hit R, Z and open the door up by rotating it like so. Then I'll hit I and insert location and rotation keyframe and then do the same for the other door. So now if we travel through our scene, we can see that we have our nice realistic corridor with our doors opening at the end. If you'd like this to lead onto another corridor, a nice simple way to do this is just go ahead, select your first corridor and hit Shift D to duplicate it. Then hit R, Z, 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. And then just hit G and Y to grab it on the Y axis and drag it to the end of the corridor. Once these doors open up, you're going to see it just back straight on to the corridor that's currently there or the wall that's currently there. So let's go tab into edit mode and go to face select and just delete these faces here that we'll see by hitting X and then deleting faces. And now we can see we have our corridor open up onto another corridor. And all we have left to do now then is go ahead and render out our image. Before we render it out, let's enable ambient occlusion, which is our shadows essentially. It gives us a bit more depth to our scene. Let's also enable screen space reflections so that we have that nice metallic reflection that's a lot more realistic. And we can even enable bloom for our lights to give it a bit more of a sci-fi effect. And finally, motion blur for as we're moving along. But if we were to switch to rendered view right now, you notice our scene doesn't look too fantastic as we don't have anything lighting it up. And I nearly forgot the most important part of our tutorial, realistic lighting. To achieve this, what we're going to do is make use of the website we are talking about earlier, Polyhaven. Now Polyhaven, you can access all kinds of great resources from, but we're only really interested in the HDR eyes or images that we can use for lighting. So I've gone to studio and I've downloaded this studio small number two. Make sure to say that in a location that you can easily access again or download any HDRI that you would like to use. Now inside of Blender, let's go to our world properties, set color to environment texture, go ahead and select open and import our desired HDRI. Now that we've done that, we have a nice lighting setup for our scene. We can go ahead and render it out. So let's go to output properties, select our output as FMPEG video, go down to encoding and change the container from Matroska to MPEG4 and set output quality to high quality. Now let's select a location to save it in. And then once we've done that, all we need to do is go ahead and press Control F12 to render that out. Well, thanks so much, guys. I hope you learned something interesting in this tutorial. I really appreciate you taking the time to check out the channel and watch these videos. If you have a request and would like to learn something about Blender specifically, please leave it in the comments below. I'm working on some currently, so they will be coming out very shortly. Once again, thanks for watching, everyone. I can't wait to see what we make together next time. Until then, this has been just the basics of creating a sci-fi corridor in Eevee in Blender version 2.93.1. Bye.